Welcome back to another episode of U-Boat. My name is Tobel. I'm excited to come back with you, and uh, the crew of the U-96 is excited as well. We're going to head out on our new mission to deliver a spy to some coordinates that are out near Alexandria, Egypt. So we're going to have to cut around the boot of Sicily, past Crete, past Tunisia, and over to Alexandria. So I'm very excited. We've got a lot of British-held territory in North a British and French, I think, uh, in North Africa. So we'll see what kind of naval power they have. I mean, we are, of course, we do have our allies um, in Italy with some naval power. I don't remember how strong Italy was, actually, come to think about it. Also, I did recruit a new officer, Fisher, but remember how I was complaining the fact that Newman is always the only radio man who's on duty. So how about we look at the management option and we try to find him a new friend. We can take Peter Fisher off the boat and add Manfred Meyer or Meyer into the crew. He was actually on the mission uh, at the headquarters to try to upgrade some of our equipment. So I think I'm going to try to give this to a random leader. Equipment production one will give you more replacement parts and med kits. Potassium absorbers will come available. That's not a bad idea. Why don't we go ahead and give that to Peter Fisher? He's stuck on uh, on the shore, so we may as well give them something. Oh, he has the expert trait. He took the time to complete down from 71 hours to 53 hours. So I think he has like a, the expert trait makes you finish something 53% faster. Sorry, 35% faster. No, I picked a random number. All right, so uh, we need to talk to Hans Fischer, who, who apparently made it all the way from the western coast of France overland and beat us here. So glad to see you again, my friend. Let's upgrade our ship. I do believe we have a new hydrophone. It consists of 48 hydrophones mounted on a dome attached to the bottom of the U-boat's hull. It has only one dead zone that spans 60 degrees to the stern. Fair enough. We're going to upgrade to the GHG Balcon, or Balcon, if you will. 16,000 credits. That's fine. We are super mega rich right now. I don't think there's any other upgrades either. I believe the only thing we've done so far are two listening devices, or two hydrophone upgrades. Meanwhile, uh, we've got tons of stuff here. I'm going to sell off the meat and just buy more meat back, to be honest. We'll grab ourselves a full stack of meat. We have a full stack of bread. And some more exotic fruits, and I think we've got plenty of food in the galley already. Ten replacement parts, ten of the med kits. I'm going to sell back the large caliber HE ammo. I think we already have the ammo in the gun itself. We should be fine on the deck gun for a bit. Uh, we'll fill back up on fuel. I would love to see more of those uh, decoys, but I'm guessing we don't get decoys until the technology is researched. Why don't we go ahead and upgrade to tier 2 torpedoes if we can. I don't really think it makes a huge difference. Maybe it's about the wake or the speed. Electric torpedo, I'm guessing, maybe either runs deeper a little bit longer or it has less of a noticeable wake behind it as it's going towards its target. So we'll use the tier two. We actually do have the, um, the forward and aft torpedo tubes loaded right now. So we are completely up to par. I think I'm going to grab some guns. I have no idea what these are used for, but sure, why not? This is small arms may be useful for officers going on dangerous missions outside. Fair enough, we've got tons of caffeine, which is the most vital component of any seafaring vessel. Let's grab a stack of cheese. I guess, why not? More cheese in case it takes a really, really long time. All right, we are completely resupplied. We have our new radio men on board. It, there's, a, there's a bit of a bug here where... Oh, actually, this time it worked fine. Sometimes when you recruit someone and you add them to the ship, their picture won't be in line like this. So if you press tab they'll be in a different place than where they are on the thing down below. I wish you could kind of drag them around, but I don't think you can. Because Mayor shouldn't be in front of the captain, in my opinion. All right, fair enough. I think we're all set to go. We've got our mission. I'm assuming our spy's on board somewhere. By the way, we don't really need to keep the lights on red at the moment. Our gyro compass is engaged. There's no flooding. I think we're all set to start this cruise. Rudder amidships. And ahead one third, or head slow, probably. We'll speed up a little bit and try to dodge out of the port without maybe smacking everything. Perfect. Let's go ahead and straighten her out right about now. Go ahead and speed up to standard. I like how my new radio man is just kind of chilling out on deck. <laughs> you may want to go down, man. We'll send him down to sleep. The captain is on the the site upstairs. We'll put uh, Hilbert Kohler on the navigation table for a bit. We're not really going to be using a ton of uh, fuel, but that's fine. We can have them doing the diesel engines anyways. Loris, did I ever change you back to being a mechanic? 
No, you're still quartermaster. I think you have delivered all of the ammunition, though, to the gun. So I'm going to put him back to mechanic roll, which just changes his priorities around. I think it makes him try to keep the torpedoes at their best status. And none of the radio guys are doing anything. Why don't you go down to sleep if there's a bunk? There may not be a bunk. You do have to start doing a bit of hot bunking with your officers every so often. All right, so we'll zoom in and make sure we don't smash right into the coastline. Go ahead and go up to a head full. And we'll speed a little bit away from shore, and then we'll, I probably we'll go back into open water towards, uh, towards um, the Gibraltar Strait a bit. Because there's a lot of land here that I think is going to pull us out of the, the fast travel mode. So we'll go out into open sea. We'll head this way. A little bit of extra distance, but on, at, you know, in the in the end, on long run, not that big of a deal, I don't think. We also might get a bit of uh, traffic this way, so maybe we'll be able to intercept someone. There's no time restriction, as far as I can tell, regarding the spy mission either. So we're just supposed to deliver him, not necessarily at any time. Well, at night apparently. So it's it's eight o'clock right now. Sorry, it's six o'clock right now, six thirty. So I assume with the distance we're traveling, we're going to get there at least in another day. So we might just have to kill a little bit of time uh, outside of the port. We'll go ahead and put another person on the engine just to reduce the amount of speed we're using, or sorry, the amount of fuel we're using. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and put somebody on the radio to make sure we've got radio coverage. I will also... I want to do something different. I think I'm going to do... I'm going to put the captain on the flat gun for a little bit. Maybe if it gets... Well, it is really dark outside. That's fair. Maybe we'll actually put both of these guys down for the night. Or at least one of them up top. So the skipper can go to sleep. It is now nighttime, so we'll change things around to the night vision mode. Or the uh, the red light. So it, it increases the range of your spotters. We're getting uh, just past Corsica and Sardinia. I'm using my terms from my um, Imperator Rome playthrough. But uh, passing up Sardinia and we're going to go through uh, near Sicily and the... I think this is Tunisia. Is it not? Tunisia should be right around here, if I remember right. So I'm going to go ahead and submerge the ship just down into Periscope Death. I'm curious to see if we're going to pick up any hull returns with our fancy new sonar. So I'm going to have somebody go on to the hydrophone. I'll take Adam off the radio so he can get a bit of rest. We'll also swap out the engineers at this point, too. And go ahead and manage the diesel engine, my friend. And the captain took over on navigation because we were a little bit... Uh, tired. Oh, wow. It's already morning. Crap. 10 o'clock in the morning, as it were. So that means we're going to take a little bit longer to get over to uh, where we're going in Alexandria. All right. So let's come to a, a pretty slow move. Close, slow crawl. We're on electric engines right now. And why don't we bring... Well, no one needs to really spot at the moment. I'm guessing if he can't hear anyone on the, on the hydrophone, then there's really no one to be heard. Why don't we try... You know what I want to try? Let's try to do this manually. I haven't messed around with this too much. Ooh, um, there is new propeller noise. Apparently he heard some tiny propeller noises. So, I don't know. We have this mission to maintain his cover. Does this mean we can't do anything while we're transporting him? I don't think it would matter, right? Let's take a bit of a detour and see what this, this little convoy is. I'm going to go up to wa uh, water over the hull. Just so we can keep our engines on electric, or sorry, diesel. Oh, we also have our, um, we have a new snorkel. We have a, or did we never research snorkel? No, we didn't. We didn't have an engineer on shore. So we never did get the chance to um, get the snorkel that lets us stay at, uh, using diesels at the periscope depth. So, all right, we'll speed up a little bit and try to, you know what? Actually, they're going to be down this way. Let's go ahead and go to flank temporarily. I don't like to do that. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to do that less. I, I know it's unrealistic to run our engines at flank speed. It's very easy in a game like this where it doesn't really punish you per se. They're, they really should maybe do something where you, um, you actually do get punished a bit if you're running flank speed for too long. We might not make this intercept. Okay, we're going to go into local. We're still at uh, a little bit underwater. It is broad daylight. By the way, I don't have anyone looking on the periscope, so we'll put you on attack periscope. Once you're on said periscope, there we go. We'll put the periscope. Actually, it should be up right now. Okay, it is. There we go. Uh, no visual contacts yet. Give somebody on your uh, your little handy dandy assistance here. Let's go ahead and slow down and see if we can't 
lock in where these people are with our hydrophone. Okay, so it doesn't have any additional range than our site does right now. So, uh, we just have to keep pushing on, I suppose. I might try to surface for a minute. I know that I hate to do that, but they're pretty fast. This uh, little convoy is going pretty quickly. It says it's only like 11 kilometers, but still, it seems like it's going a lot faster than that. Now, now once you get into the local area, though, you have to hunt them down individually. So we'll try to explore where they're at. Uh, we did just pop our air reserves. Let me go ahead and speed us back up to flank for a bit. I'm going to give one of my orders to my engineers to... Actually, well, you're in the back here. You can do this. Go ahead and just do diesel uh, compressor on. So we can build up some more of the reserves for air. And we'll put Kohler here on the targeting site up top. Two crew to assist him. Graf, you can also actually go down for sleep. This is a pretty close-in fight we might have. Chimney spoke spotted. Excellent. So we are still on target. We'll go ahead and return this, uh, re uh, sorry, send that information back home to the BDU. That's why I love having two radio guys. They can kind of switch off each other and do uh, different tasks that you need them to do. I'm going to take Manfred Meyer off the radio for a bit. Have him go down to rest. We'll take the crewmen off him. Uh, how's the crew? We have very dishes still, so they're still really, really happy. That horrible sound you hear is the compressor trying to put some power back into, sorry, put, try to put some uh, air back into the reserves. Into our tanks. So we're going at a course of zero hours. This is your own bearing, not necessarily your compass bearing. So this is just the direction of your travel. I think this, the, the smoke was off in this rough direction. Let's zoom into eight. God, it's like dirty, too. I can't tell if it's my, my monitor or the game. A bit of rough seas today. I can't tell how the visibility... It kind of looks foggy-ish. It doesn't look all that clear. Okay, so what was the... Kapitän. If we're, tra we're traveling in this direction... This is like... 20 degrees, 20 to 30 degrees off our... Uh, off our, uh, our bow. So I think I want to be looking somewhere in this general direction, but I think it's too foggy... To really see the chimney smoke. Not that I'm going, like, you know, slow enough to see it in the first place. All right, let's speed up a bit and see if the AI can uh, get a visual. Oh, I think I got them. Right here. Awesome. Okay, so I'm seeing at least um, one, two, three. They all look like merchants. That looks like the really juicy one. That's the big one. I think that's the Liberty. Is that what it was called? I don't quite remember. Let me pull up my ID book real quick. It's got the uh, full-on three masts here. Maybe not. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up. No, that wasn't this one. It was this one. Yeah, this is the nice one. Now, this one can defend itself, by the way. The Liberty... The Liberty... It almost looks like a converted destroyer hull or something. But it's got... Um, yeah, sure enough. We're seeing two masts... Oh, hang on. Oh, I totally lied. I got us excited for no reason. There's no... There's no double arms off the outer mast. It's only an arm coming off to one angle. Okay, so this is the one that's got... I think that is coming up this way. The NA-1. Okay, so this is an NA-1. Let's lock this target. And I'm going to recognize this as an NA-1. We're still pretty far away. I don't think they spot, they, they're they going to see us anytime soon. Okay, the new ship over here is just a two-master with... Yep, I think this is the Empire Belt. We've got one smokestack and the control room... And then one mast with arms sticking off of each. Maybe there's two here uh, that are kind of parallel. So we're going to say this is tentatively the Empire Bell. And then directly in front of us, we have another Empire Bell, it looks like. Cool. Empire Tower. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Let's double check this. Did I get this one wrong? The Empire Bell does not have the central mast here. The It almost looks like a communications tower. These look like they're both Empire Towers then. Yep, sure enough, because it's got that one central uh, stack here that might be a radio tower or something else. So we'll lock this target, if I can. Game, 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 there we go. Changing you back to, or changing you over to Empire Tower. I will start diving here in just a minute. We're still pretty far away, so my hope is that we are out of range. I don't have any percentage of them seeing us at the moment. So we're going to identify you as an Empire Tower. Lovely. Let's go ahead and zoom out. How far away? I mean... 
if it's all these types of ships, you know, they're they're pretty well undefended, so it's not like they're going to be a threat to us. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to the map. We are pretty close, so I'm going to have us start going under. Let's go ahead and start giving some targets out. I want my Observer Kohler, and I want the guy on the radio phone, which is Newman, to start plotting out the course for this guy. Let's go ahead and bring it down to standard. Let's go down to periscope depth. We're going to change the light over to blue for silent running so we can preserve some oxygen. Hopefully this isn't going to mess up his cover. I have no idea what this actually does. The whole maintain his cover thing. This might be submissions or, or, or secondary missions we get. So I'm not entirely sure. Do we need to report anything back to command from the radio? We're still on the surface. We might be able to get a message away. Like, do we have, do we have a report about sighting them? I guess not. All right, fair enough. Let's have you go to sleep. Uh, we've got... Kohler is... I have no idea what Kohler was doing. He might, be, he might be changing the lights over. Captain Graf, I want you... You already are on the attacked periscope. That's fine. So, you're on the attack periscope. I want my second engineer, Loris, here to get off his butt to make sure that the torpedoes are prepared. Weist, we're going to switch over to electrics. So go ahead and switch over to the Manage Electric. You're on the listening tower. Or the listening, um, hydrophone. Otherwise, I think we're okay. We'll keep building up our target information about these guys. We're outside of our range now that we went down to, to periscope depth. That's fine. Take somebody away from you. Let me plot an intercept here. That's actually just going to take us right at this. I want them somewhere, like, over here. And as we get them into range and we start to understand their final speed, we'll curve into them to make our final attack run. I'm going to use the automated for one of the ships, and I'm going to try another manual attack on maybe the outermost ship. And we're going to do one torpedo, ape uh, one torpedo each to try to cut back on some of the overkill I think I've been, I've been doing. Our engineer is currently uh, stocking, or sorry, warming up the torpedoes. All right, you guys start doing the automatic targeting for this unknown freighter. It lost the things that I gave it, which is kind of rather annoying, but I assume at some point we'll be able to redo that. Okay, we're going to have to swap out Newman real quick, because he is a little bit tired. So I'm going to have Newman go to sleep. Monfred Mayer, go ahead and get on the hydrophone. I think as long as somebody is looking at the ship, you don't lose the progress made by one of your crewmen. So I still retain the 50% confidence uh, from that. I'm going to swap Groff down now, too, because he's getting a little bit tired as well. Kohler's going to go on to the attack periscope with one crew member to assist. These guys are going to go ahead down for a nap. My engineers are a little bit tired. Maybe after he heats up all the torpedoes, I'll give someone else there to assist him with it. There we go. Uh, who's on? Kohler? There we go. Okay, Kohler's on the attack periscope. I want you to raise the scope up just a wee bit more. And we should be looking at zero bearing. Now they're a little bit off to our right side. So maybe 30? There it is. Okay. So which one's which? <laughs> that's the challenge. We have... I think this one is the one that's on the outermost part. I'm trying to think of how we would... How could we tell, uh, tell the difference here? It is... There's one in the lead... Then there's one far and one near. So the far one might be visually in the center from us. So, God, I don't know why the periscope keeps going down so low. So this is the first one. This is the one that's much farther back. This should be the one that's closest to us. So I want to lock this one. It should only be this in the end thing, right? In A1. All right, let's zoom in. So, we're going to use a couple of tools on the periscope itself. Let's get this ghost thing set on top of the mask. God, this freaks me out. The waterline's somewhere... Are we supposed to do, like, guesstimate the waterline? I guess this is the waterline, pretty much. So, we're going to snag the waterline on the topmost mast. Somewhere like that. Three kilometers sounds about roughly average. Might be a little bit too far out. We'll get the speed next. Okay, 
That is set as 9 kilometers an hour. That's about right. These normally travel at about 9 to 10 kilometers per hour. The only other thing left is to set the course. I always don't like doing it with this thing. I can never seem to get the course really accurate. So it's supposed to say basically what is the visually ma match the course of your target. I always have trouble with this. So what I'd like to rather do is use the map to get a better estimate. Remember, we're doing the manual targeting for this ship here. So I'm going to put down a point. Someone made a good point, by the way, that normally in some submarine simulators, there is an angle on bow, I believe, is the calculation. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to figure out the angle of that ship relative to the bow of your ship. So we would take this course we're on, measure the course they're on, and then find the difference in the angle. That way you're programming the torpedo. What we're doing instead is actually finding the true course of the ship, not the angle on the bow. And it's a bit unrealistic, and that's just, this is why I was hoping that maybe we would have another layer of complication or difficulty if we wanted to, uh, in order to make the ship, you know, in order to make it more of a true subsim. But unfortunately, right now it seems like they're using kind of the automated system instead. So you input three things, and then the torpedo calculation is kind of set from there. All right, I've tracked this guy's uh, distance or his uh, his course here through three points. So we're going to try to estimate that out. And it almost looks like it's about 95 or something. Let's reverse it and go back this way. And then we can kind of use the lines of latitude and longitude to help us get the angle. Might be a little bit off, but I think it should be okay. So uh, we'll measure here to here. And the angle is 3 degrees. So it looks like they're moving 3 degrees more than 90. So it's 93 degrees is their heading. Is how that works out. So the difference between the, uh, the 90 degree line of latitude here is that it is, um, they're looking like a course of 93. It's three degrees more. So what do we see from the automated guess? The automated system thinks they're going at 92.5, right? So that makes sense. They also think that they're going at nine kilometers per hour, which we have, right? Now we put our measurement of three kilometers in earlier. So if we remeasure it, and really it's as easy as, you know, dragging a ruler from your ship to their ship which is, it says 2 kilometers. We're really about 2.5. I hate that it's only 1 or 2 kilometers. Like, you can't, that seems very inaccurate to me. So I'm really hoping they adjust some of the calculations that goes into torpedoes. Right now, I'm torn because I've, I've been playing this for a little bit, and I've had different people say, you know, things, whether or not it, it feels uh, rather, you know, complicated or what. It, it does feel like almost like a casual, there's a level of comp complexity to the crew management, but the level of simulation for the submarine attack is less. It's casual. So it's like, it's, it's, it's more FTL than Silent Hunter, if that makes any sense. So just to give you a feel for where it's at right now, that's, that's kind of what I'm estimating. It definitely feels more FTL for the crew management, but a little bit more casual in terms of how difficult all the calculations are for the torpedo attacks and things like that. The, course, the courses are automatically updated. So, you know, and there's going to be a certain level of, of ease to that. All right, we've uh, went ahead and we're going to adjust our distance to two kilometers. We're uh, adjusting the course here to 93 degrees, and we still think they're at nine kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, we have a 97% confidence on the lead ship, and, sorry about the ding, we have a 53% confidence on the back ship. Let's wait a little bit longer until we have a higher confidence. We're going to fire, try to fire one torpedo at all three, although I don't think we're going to be able to make that split, but we'll do it for fun. Okay, so we've got ourselves a 96% a confidence on the farthest out ship. I'm going to assign someone to the front ship to make sure that's, that information is updated. I'm going to go ahead and remeasure the distance to our ship here, which is now down to one kilometer. So let's select him and change this to one kilometer. Oh, this actually updated, it looks like. Maybe this is updating as we go. I still think they're roughly at 92 or 93 degrees, uh, according to the automatic calculation it's still 92.4 or close to it so here's what we're going to try i believe all of our torpedoes are warmed up if not loris is about to do it right now god i hope they're not he's going aft so maybe he's looking at the back one um okay well, let's warm up number uh, the other one here so we got three torpedoes that are warmed up right now got it all right so we're going to use the map for this mostly because it's easier to to kind of click between the different targets so this is our manual target na1 I'm going to bring up the torpedo panel. Let's go ahead and flood tube number two. 
Oh, I also need to think about distance. Sorry, no, we need to actually target the farther ship first. This is target B, farther out. Because we want to make sure that it moves at the least, uh, last possible moment. So, tube number two is loaded. Are you still heated up? Sorry, I wanted to make sure it was still heated and not a dud. We're going to fire tube number two. Then we're going to wait a little bit of time. And then we're going to fire three and four. All right. Uh, target is selected on B. 98% confidence. Fire. Okay, then we're going to do target A. Let's flood tube number three. I'm going to wait a little bit longer because I don't want these to make an adjustment. We might be able to thread the needle on this, too. I think it looks like the torpedo is going to go through. I don't know if we got the angle right here, though. I'll wait until the torpedo is roughly between these first two ships. That's about the distance that the new torpedoes will have to go. So hopefully all three torpedoes will be hitting at roughly the same time. Hopefully we're still within a kilometer here. Nothing's changed. Nine kilometers, 93 degrees, one kilometer. Sorry, nine kilometers per hour. Okay, target A. Uh, target A is now... Uh, sorry, the first target is half the distance. Tube 3 is flooded. Let's target freighter A. Fire. Flood tube 4. Target our NA-1. And as soon as that's ready, let's fire. This torpedo has quite a bit of an angle to cut back on. I should have been a little bit more 90 degrees on that one, but that's okay. Okay, Torpedo 4 is away. Let's go ahead and turn into the targets. We're going to go to flank speed, and we're going to come up to uh, surface. The far target should be getting struck now. Let's go ahead and pause, because I'd really like to see this maybe from far away. Uh, where are they at relative to those? Oh, hey, they're actually really close. Wonderful. Close down the torpedo manual or the, uh, the window. Nice. Straight shot. Right in the center of the, the hull. Serious damage on the far target. That one might be going down. That's great. 30 seconds to the new impact. They might be trying to turn, but I don't think they're going to have a chance to. Shit! Look! The cover thing went down. Is this because we're spotted? That's so silly. Alright, I get it, I suppose. I mean, if we kill them all, we should get that back. I feel like we should be a lot... The torpedo should have already been there. There we go. There's our central shot. Nice. We hit all three ships with one salvo. Excellent. Let's go ahead and send Klaus to the deck gun. We're going to finish off any of them that aren't sinking. Uh, this Empire ship is going down. It is. It has stopped, but they have abandoned the vessel. So we want to make sure that sinks. The Empire Bell uh, Hall is going down. The NA-1 just is gone. The NA-1 is 100% gone. Let's get somebody onto my radio. All right. Perfect. Let's go ahead and go on to the captain. Let's send a report that the NA-1 has been sunk. I'm going to manually control my captain for a minute. By the way, pause. Zoom out. Grab one of my engineers. I actually want you guys to go ahead and refill the compressors just in case. Also, I want Kohler to come up here on the, on the flat gun just in case we have any visitors because we are in the middle of the Mediterranean. So there's a chance that somebody could get some help. All right. Uh, Captain, I want you to get some help on deck to reload faster. Wow, did you actually just make a shot? That never happens. So that one looks like it's completely sunk. The NA-1 back here is getting sunk as well. So the only target left for us is our friend... Crap. <laughs> our friend far away. There we go. And we've got what's selected? We've got HE. I like how there's a float value now in my ammunition. If you look at the ammunition, we've got like a float value. That's a little bit funky. One point... One out of 6.710499. So apparently we have a 6.710 repeating of a, a round somehow. I'm going to also send a report that we sunk the Empire Bell. I think if you don't report them, you might be missing out on some money. So we'll try to report them as we kill them. We're at a really lucky spot right now that we're able to do this. Can't tell if I'm hitting or not. There we go. There's a strike. Want to see me some fires on deck. Man, the seas are really rough right now. Holy crap. I think as the crew levels up... Oh, you know what I've forgotten to do this entire time? Is look at the crew to see if they need a level up or not. Alright, it looks like it's listing to starboard. Good night. We're listing to starboard too. Come on. Maybe I should trust the uh, AI captain here. 
I doubt he'll do much better job than the humans will, but I'm not doing too hot right now. There we go. We uh, have a massive fire on board. It's listing really heavily to starboard now. I think both other ships have sunk, by the way. That's a beauty. Burn! Oh, sorry. <laughs> this game looks very pretty if you take the UI away. By the way, you will remove your UI. But yeah, very screenshot worthy. As you're going. And there we go. Empire Explorer sunk. We'll send our message. And I think that's pretty much it. Were all three targets gone? Yep. Sure enough, all three targets are gone. Um, I'm kind of bummed out that we managed to almost blow this guy's cover completely. So, maybe it has something to do about, um, I have no idea. Are we getting shot at? Are we trying to shoot someone? I have no idea. Mission completed. Mo Wait, what the hell? I'm so confused. Port of Alexandria infiltration completed. What the hell just happened? That's super awkward. Right, well, we just managed to bug out the game and complete our mission without going anywhere near the Port of Alexandria. So, hooray! <laughs> I guess that's just what we get for having a bit of a buggy game. I think, or early access, I should say. Um, I'm guessing that something happened we, between me sending my mission reports home and, uh, you know, my, my uh, what you call it, the spy. I guess we were on the surface too long. I guess they radioed home that there's a U-boat operating in the area. Maybe that's what the uh, the game was talking about there. I have no idea. But we're going to go ahead and head back home. Thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll pick up a new mission tomorrow and uh, continue on our way of conquering the Mediterranean for the German Navy. Until next time, my friends, my name is Tobel. Take care.